uh, this um, fascination with the Mark of the Beast. And I remember as a kid, I remember it was the credit card at first, and then it was the scanners. Remember, the I, some of this stuff is so, you look back, it's so crazy. You know, scanners and, you know, that they have the grocery stores. And that was going to be, I can't remember all the Mark of the Beast, you know, and, and, and of course they're coming out with new ones all the time. But, you know, do um, you have any thoughts on, on you know, on the mark of the, and one person said that this, you know, this kind of falls into the Christian version of Stephen King. People love to be yeah, scared. And so right. instead of Stephen King, exactly. they have their own spiritual version, but do you have any ideas or, or do you have any thoughts on, 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 uh, on, on the, both the beast and the mark of the, what, what that may be? Yeah. Well, as far as credit cards, if they tell you you have to deny Jesus to get a credit card, obviously <laughs> don't get the credit card. Yeah, there you go. Okay. But, but yeah. I mean, that's the, that would be the principle there. But, of course, they didn't have the credit card in mind when that happened. You look through the rest of the book of Revelation for marks on people. Uh -huh. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12, it says that we will be pillars in the temple of our God. Most mm -hmm. of us don't take that literally, that we will be holding up the ceiling. But there are often inscriptions on pillars, and it says that we'll be pillars mm -hmm. in the temple of our God, and that he'll write on us the name of of our God and the name of the New Jerusalem. In chapter uh, 22, it says that his servants will serve him before his face and his name will be on their foreheads. In chapter 17, it says that Babylon the Great has a name written on her, Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus comes back in chapter 19 with a name written on him. Now, Jesus obviously is literal, but is Babylon a literal woman with a name literally written on it? And also, chapter 7, you have the righteous who are sealed with uh, with seals. Mm -hmm. they're, they're sealed by God. And that idea goes back to Ezekiel chapter 9. They're sealed with God to protect them. Ezekiel chapter 9, the angel, an angel goes forth and marks God's servants so the judgments won't touch them. And then another angel goes out and starts slaying everybody else who doesn't have that mark. Um, There's another one. I sorry, I'm trying to revelation <coughs> isn't my, uh, yeah. but uh, but is there's some stones too that have the the name on it, right? And is it in uh, two seventeen speaks of a white stone. The white, okay, yeah. uh, and, and with a new name written on it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, also, there was a document goes back to. First century BC, so it's you know it was widely circulated by this point. The Psalms of Solomon, not not written by Solomon authentically, but the Psalms of Solomon speaks of uh, a mark for the righteous and a mark for the wicked. Uh -huh. So this idea was already understood, but it was a mark that was only seen by God and by angels. Hmm. So essentially, this is speaking of one's ownership. So in 13, wow. 16 through 18, it speaks of, of a mark of the beast. Okay. Chapter 14 and verse 1, the very next verse, there's no chapter divisions in the original. It speaks of 144,000 with the Lamb on Mount Zion, and on them is written the name of the Lamb. Mm. And so the message is you've got to serve somebody. You're either going to have the, the name of the beast written on you or mm -hmm. the name of the Lamb. Who are you going to serve? If somebody actually goes around stamping things on people, I'm not going to want that. But right. but uh, but the message of it is relevant to every generation, and that is choose whom you'll serve. And what I was just saying, Jesus said, "You are of your father, the devil." Yeah. I mean, so I mean, so it would be you're on one uh, side or the yeah, other. On the other, yeah. Okay. Serve Jesus, huh. and and even the hundred forty four thousand. Um, that there's a lot of things from the Old Testament that are reapplied in the Book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Why is why is the New Jerusalem shaped like a cube? Well, in the Old Testament, the Holy of Holies is is shaped like a cube. We're going to be in the presence of God, undistracted, in the fullness of His glory forever and ever. In terms of the hundred forty four thousand, uh, twelve thousand from each of the each of the tribes. Well, those numbers get reused. 144 and 12,000 appear in Revelation 21 as the dimensions in Greek. Some of the translations don't have it because they try to give it to you in miles or kilometers. Uh -huh. But in Greek, it's it's 12,000 stadia squared, and then the wall is 100, well, actually cubed, and then the wall is 144 cubits. Hmm. So the numbers get reused. These 
this is the new Jerusalem. This is the city of God for the people of God. The new, the, the 144,000 who are standing with the Lamb of Mount Zion in chapter 14 are the new Jerusalemites. And so in chapter 7, you know, it's, it's 12,000 from each of these 12 tribes. And immediately after that, there's another vision. Now, sometimes in the Old Testament, another vision is something new. Sometimes it's another way of looking at the same thing, like Joseph's dreams or, or Pharaoh's dreams. Mm -hmm. And so in Revelation 7, it goes on to speak of this innumerable multitude from every kindred and tribe and people and nation. So not just from the 12 right, tribes. Yeah. And they, they're not just 140,000, they're innumerable. Yeah, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, but, but then you look at what it says about them. It, it says that uh, the Lamb was in the midst of the throne, will lead them to springs of living water, will neither hunger nor thirst, um, neither cold nor heat, or the sun won't be down on them, and, and so on. Uh, he'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. Mm -hmm. That's taken from two texts in Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 10, and also Isaiah chapter 25. And two different, two two changes are made there because Isaiah is talking about Israel, God's people, and is talking about what God, Yahweh, will do for his people. Yeah. In Revelation, the two changes are, it now refers to God and the Lamb. So Jesus is divine. And secondly, it's about these people from every tribe and nation. Revelation has already said that these people from every kindred and tribe and people and nation will be a kingdom and priests before him. Mm -hmm. So that we will be, um, that's language taken from Exodus 19, applied to Israel. So, in other words, this is for Jewish believers in Jesus, Messianic Jews, but it's also for all the Gentile believers who have been grafted into the heritage of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, that we, we all worship God together. Uh, that's why the churches are portrayed as lampstands, which was a symbol for Jewish congregations mm -hmm. in, the, in the Roman Empire. Um, so the 144,000 is not the first Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's, there's a couple ways to take it. Either, it, either it's Messianic Jews, uh, and then it's complemented with Messianic Gentiles, so to speak, or um, the, the number is symbolic and the identity is symbolic, but this refers to all the people of God, both Jewish and Gentile, who are part of the heritage of, of God's people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably the latter, but you can make that's, an argument for the former. I, uh, well. yeah, I would, that, that's actually the way I, I was thought, you know, mostly because I, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, when the, when the veil is, is ripped right down. There's neither, you know. I mean, there. It's 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 not two people. It's one people now. Yeah. I would, I'm just kind of thinking out yeah. loud here. I haven't really. Yeah. I, I'm not a. I I am. You know. I'm staying away from Revelation in terms of any expertise. So I depend on on people like you. I I because I you know I'm uh, I look at it and I think wow that's I mean there's a lot of stuff here a lot of stuff to unpack. But um but when it comes to that I would I would kind of think that um, just reading it, you know going through it. That, that it would really be everybody because it's it's of all nations and all people and we, you know we still have our distinctive cultural identities yeah. and languages you know I and mean, if I if uh, my wife is francophone is her you know, she, first language is French if she comes out and starts speaking to us in French we may not be able to follow everything she yeah. says but uh, or if I speak in English to somebody who doesn't speak English uh, but the the good news is. That we are the New Jerusalemites. Yeah, it's the people, the the city of God, for the people of God. It's our home. Yeah. All of us who are followers of the Lamb, who is the rightful King of Israel. Yeah. Um, 